Hi guys, I want to introduce you to a computer war game uh, by John Taylor Software called Red Victory. Now, I'm sure everyone has heard of um, of uh, close combat. Uh, this is a bit more complicated, and it appears that although the graphics might not be as great as uh, close combat, um, the AI seems to be a little bit more... Um, more better. Um, however, if you're not used to working with uh, John Tiller software, it may at first seem a little bit odd. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start a new scenario, and I think um, you can see through the pop ups here new scenario. I'm going to try and play something that I haven't played before. So boot camp number four, open. And now you get a selection w window. You can play the Allies, the Russians, or the Axis. Uh, manual means that you're playing. Automatic is the computer playing. And automatic with fog of war uh, means you cannot see where the enemy is coming from unless you have line of sight to them. Um, I want to take it easy for uh, on myself so I can also uh, show you how the Axis uh, units look like. So manual and automatic, okay. And this is how the counters look. As you can see, it's a pretty fast AI. But, and here's the Axis player. Here is the Russian player. And you have a pretty good graphic down there. So, but they're 2D, they're not 3D. Um, support exists in this scenario. This scenario has an illumination limit of five. I'll show you what that means. now. I did say there is 2D graphics, however there is also 3D. And um, this is where the quirkiness of this interface comes in. So if you, if you look at settings, there is wheel zoom. And if I check that, you can go in and out of the uh, board. Oops. But here's the 3D. Um, 3D um, uh, graphics. So this is how the 3D graphics look like, and you, with your mouse wheel, you end up going to 2D, which is a bit odd, right? So how do you navigate from one end of the board to the other? You can either drag your mouse to the edge of one board or the other, and it'll go up and down. And the other, there's an, also an icon here where you can quickly, you have to click on it again. You can't keep it open, I don't think. So jump dialog. See, it closes every time, and that's why I don't like the uh, wheel zoom activated. Let's take a look at the settings. There's the introduction, prompt for scenario, beep on error, you can turn that off, beep on hotspot, I'm not too sure what that means, smooth scroll, you like to have that, auto scroll, that's great, um, wheel zoom, we already demonstrated what that is, different sounds and songs. I keep the sound off. Uh, it can be annoying sometimes, I suppose. I, I, I guess other people will enjoy it. Hex outlines. I like to see the hex, hex outlines, although they're not that prevalent, predominant in the graphics. Autosave, I, I found that if I had that checked, every time I would change a turn, it would pop up the save dialog, and I found that also annoying. Again, that's this is my personal preference. Uh, alternate uh, highlighting and PBEM encryption. I'm not too sure what that's about, but I will be try and play this by uh, face to face on the weekend with a, an acquaintance of mine. Ask before advancing. Ask before unloading and dropping. Use NATO symbols. Let's see what the oh, this is great. Except for the tanks, the tanks do not change to. Um, NATO symbols. And that's heavier, heavy infantry right there. This is artillery. Uh, I kind of like that, but uh, let, let's go back to settings. Let's turn them off. Okay. Uh, settings. Alt single use. Leaders on top. I like to have my leaders on top so I can see where my leaders are. This is an example of a leader here with a little star. And this is an ordinary squad. And leaders can call in artillery. and. Maybe I'll, I'll be able to show you that as well. 
Authorized graphics? I'm scared to, to turn that off. Let's see. Well, I, I don't see any difference before or after. I'm just going to leave it on. And initial view, optional rules. I'm not going to go into that. AI, uh, that's what we selected in the first place. So you have units on off for view, full screen map. No, I, I like to have uh, my little uh, status on the bottom. Let's see, full screen up uh, there. I like to have this little status here because I can show you what, what's going to happen. Uh, what's the importance of these little icons down there? They're not little, but big. Fine unit. Okay, that's a, like a control F search, but without the control F, I don't su I suppose. Uh, jump dialog, company marking, special markers on top, shade and highlighting. Um, objectives. Well, we could see where the objectives are. Uh, right here, 20 points, 40 points, and 20 points. That's what we have to protect. That's like a Tusha rocket. Yay. No, it's not. It is a towed 57 millimeter AT gun that we'll have to bring in to uh, uh, to the battle. Um, units and different leader commands. Now, all these commands that you have here, there are shortcuts up here in this button. Now, basically, you want to see what your LOS is. This unit, for example, he has a he's a leader with an, a flare gun, and you don't want to turn that off. Uh, turn that off. You can click on this button, and you'll see the visible hexes. He doesn't have a lot. He doesn't have a lot. He doesn't have a lot. Does he have any? No. So basically, um, let me show you here um, the importance of these hexes. When you uh, right-click on them, you can see that there's range 3, length, penetration, I suppose, for pen. Here I have range of 18. Here I have a range of 5. This is only 4 hexes uh, away. So if you want to use the full range of your firepower, you want, them, you want your enemy to approach you and ambush them. Uh, this fellow here should have a range of 25, but uh, let's wait until the Germans come into the open and then open fire. Oops, uh, left click to select the unit. This is an AT gun, uh, anti-tank rifle actually. Again, here's your, your where your artillery support comes in. So here's your leader. You activate him, you activate him, and then you can call in support. And I have a 76 millimeter howitzer. Um, you can call them, just like that. Call in the uh, artillery, and then when um, when uh, th the artillery actually arrives, you can uh, target it. And what we've got here, mortar, and he has a range of 50, so he can target the whole board basically but again we want to wait until the enemy comes into the border into the open let's advance the turn here they are advancing we got some mines going on down here ally turn 2 of 16 click and we want the uh, SS troops to advance into our ambush there we go Now, as you can see, this AI, compared to every other AI I have seen, is uh, pretty good. Uh, the only complaint I have with respect to this game, and I'm hoping I'll demonstrate this to you in the next turn, is that you have a very hard time gaining, gaining casualties. Uh, units will fire at one another, and it appears that there's no... Uh, no KIAs, very little casualties whatsoever. We'll see. Okay, uh, my unit already fired there automatically. 
uh, I guess it's like a type of reaction fire. Um, support is available. That's great. So I could show you an example of how to call in support. So support, uh, this is the unit with support. You left click on the leader, left click on the unit with a radio, click on support. Uh, here's the available, click on your target. And here you have different fire types. Oh, actually it's 76 HE only. Uh, if that gun was capable of firing smoke, you'd be you'd have smoke as well. And it says right click on the map where you want the fire to come down. This is tremendously inaccurate, but uh, I'll right click here, see what happens. Takes a bit of time, but then you'll see some explosions happening like you over here. Zero dead. Two, what a, mir a miracle. And there it goes. Whoa. Okay, that was our fire mission. And uh, we have one unit that's disrupted. Um, now, where's my LMG? That's a AT gun. Ooh. So we have a leader squad and he only fires four hexes away so you wanna you wanna deactivate him and he will fire and uh, let's see where we're gonna fire at uh, let's go get to that leader so what you wanna do is uh, press the control button and right click on your target hex or left click no let's see let's try again Oh, yeah. is he in the LOS? No. Darn. Maybe what we need to do is fire an illumination, illumination hex. Let's see. Uh, three. Range three. So that would be here. Okay, so if we fire here, again, control and right click. There's your illumination. And now, let's see if that MMG can see him now pretty much I hope I can fire on the leader no what does it say no units have been selected to fire okay hold on unselect this one and there's your firing two fire one ah, I got one casualty point great now this guy will have no choice but to fire and uh, basically he'll fire there, deactivate that, and he will fire at full force as well on this unit. No more firing left. He has the ability to fire as well. Click there, you don't want to fire the satchel charge, you only ha can fire to the adjacent hex. We'll fire here. As you can see, completely ineffective fire. And now we can fire our mortar as well. Control, control, right click, select them, go like that. Select them basically by clicking on that big icon on the bottom. One more fire. Okay, we're done with firing. This unit has fired. See, fire zero, uh, fire zero, fire zero. Uh, this guy is going to wait. Uh, he already fired. Let's see if we're going to fire here. So we're just going to fire that, not this. There, deactivate that. So I, I, you click it, left click on it, and you can deactivate it if it's grayed out. It's not going to fire. He's going to fire here. So let's do that again. Uh, here here and control right click manage to pin them and what that means is this unit will not advance um, so basically that is the way the cookie crumbles now for movement of trucks uh, everything to the left of, of that truck is probably being told here so let's see if that is true um, 
I'm gonna select them see why not so I, I clicked on this truck here the other units that are uh, are with them are being towed so I want to turn them either clockwise or counterclockwise here and then just right click to the hex that you want them to move to great I think um, here would be a great place and you want to drop them to the ground unload movement allowing exceeded so I'm gonna have to wait uh, I'm gonna have to wait for him to unload uh, let's see if I can move one more hex oh I can uh, this might be a better place to to, to put him and then this is the little arrow here is it it's your covered arc so you want to move him a little bit clockwise let's see there you go it moves from one hex side to the other I'm not sure why it wouldn't align to this hex side but that's pretty much the game and it's an interesting game um, if you want to check it check it out it's from John Tiller software I'm gonna put the link below um, I know I haven't posted uh, too many videos lately I'm enjoying wargaming a lot and um, yeah I, I'm also busy and exhausted with uh, working at home with the COVID-19 crisis that's the way the cookie crumbles and uh, we're making the most of it stay safe folks and thanks for watching this video